Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this May 5th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon. Glad you're here. How are you, man? What's up? Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. May 5th. And, uh, and it's on a Thursday. I mean, I it's... Yeah, it's an inconvenient time to party if you're going to There's work. There's going to be a bunch of people calling in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been me about five years ago. <laughs> but I didn't. I wouldn't have called in. I would have just went to work on over. Yeah. Well, and it, that kind of makes... It, yeah, it's just a huge holiday. It, you know, it's an actual holiday in America. Like a holiday... Yeah, I mean, I mean, these the days, federal government declared it a holiday in 2005. It's a holiday, like really it's actual U.S. recognized holiday. It's funny because there are there are so many holidays, but then there's the holidays that you get paid for for taking off with some companies, you know. Yeah, yeah. So and then some companies decide which holidays they're going to pay. For. Right, right. That's exactly right. I mean, because I don't know. That's not us. No, people get paid when they work. <laughs> you know, on uh, on in America, the average American drinks three and a half. So this is across the board, even people that don't drink three and a half alcoholic beverages on Cinco de Mayo. Three and a half. Mm -hmm. That's a lot because there's a lot of people that don't drink. Yeah. And somebody's got to make up for them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I was going to say, I, 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 I don't have very many alcoholic drinks. <clears throat> and I've never had, I can say, I've never had one on a Cinco de Mayo as a celebration. You know, I mean, it's just not. not no, no, no. Another record. crazy uh, uh, fact. Yeah. Americans drink more tequila than anybody in the world combined. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you use tequila in a mixed drink? Or do you, do people just drink it straight normally? I'm trying well, to. I, I, I think both. I, I mean, margaritas. We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Americans yeah. spend about $2.9 billion a year on margaritas. <laughs> we have over 54,000 Mexican restaurants in the U.S. That that I can I can get. That's my favorite food. Yeah, but it's a lot of people's favorite food. Yeah, it's, it's yummy. A lot it's of people think Cinco de Mayo is uh, Mexican Independent Day, but it's not. What is it's it? just a day to celebrate the fact that they they are resisting foreign invasion. It's not their actual Independence Day. Hmm. I think it. it uh, I think it. Uh, it was like because like French. It was like the French War with them. What was that war called? Let me look. What was that war called? I don't know, but it was definitely like the Battle of Puebla, like the French invaded, and this uh -huh. day was when they stopped them. But it's not an actual Independence Day. So I've been, I've been Tanya and I've been watching a series on Netflix called, I think it's called The Sun, and it's the the Sun of Texas, and it's a and Pierce Bronson plays this character who in the early. 1900s has a ranch in South Texas. And so part of that is his interaction with Mexicans and with Native Americans. And it's just, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting because you kind of, you know, I mean, with those movies or with those shows, it, it might not be 100% accurate, but you certainly get the climate of what it been like, you know, because the Mexicans felt the same way about us that the native americans did like why are you on our land why are you here you know and so it's just it's just an interesting it's been an interesting well a mexican is just a native american mixed with a spanish person well i was thinking of a mexican like someone from mexico so yeah, yeah an indigenous person to that area mixed with a spanish person makes a mexican okay right i don't know yeah, the Spanish invaded that area. Right. Just like we... Oh, right, 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 right. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're, I'm, I'm following you. Yeah, because that's yeah. where... Who was it that, you know, I mean, when when they were looking for America, they actually ended up on... on Who was that guy? Magellan that ended up on... Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Yeah, just, just a, a, an indigenous person to Mexico. 
yeah. like an, an American Indian or a, whatever Indians are called. I don't, I don't know the yeah. right name for it. Uh, it. Like we're like people like me that have Indian blood in us are just a European mixed with, you know, yeah. an indigenous person. And then a Mexican is an indigenous person mixed with Spanish. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of how it, I mean, that's just how I look at it. <laughs> probably, <laughs> some people are probably like, oh, oh, oh. But, I mean, well, that's... it's, I guess the, the thing I find just interesting and educational is that, you know, so the, the native Americans were the originals and then the Mexicans or the Spanish settled and they, they, you know, took over a lot of that over hundreds of years. And then, and then the whites came in after the fact, I mean, so it's just, it was, uh, there was just a, what a constant turmoil, you know? No, but there was like a dividing line, basically like South America, like Spanish didn't invade here, like where no. we live. Right. They, they invaded down below. And that would have been the difference between native Americans and down there is like Aztecs. You know what I mean? Like right. they, they're, they're not native Americans. They weren't in America. Right. But, but I mean, indigenous people, I mean, yeah, whether, there, whether, whether, word. whether that's, whether that's, you know, the indigenous people of North America or of South, South America, America, whatever, yeah. type, you know, um, but I mean, the whole process has been a process of one race coming in and overpopulating and taking over another. And then, and then the whites were a part of that migration process and so on and so forth. And anyhow, it's just, you know, I don't have any, I, we can't change history. I, I don't, I don't feel shame for it, but it is, but you want to be aware. I mean, it's just interesting. You know, you, we want to, you know, we just want to be think. Have you heard about speaking of such, have you been following the Tulsa? Um, not Tulsa. There's a, maybe it is. Yeah. It's Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, so back in the early 1900s, there was there was a, a neighborhood of black of neighborhood black community and uh, through racial whatever it is that you want to i mean their entire community was burned down hundreds of of uh, blacks were killed you know of the part of the black community anyhow and so now there it's really interesting because three of the descendants are are suing the city of Col Tulsa for reparations. I never uh, even heard of it. Yeah, well, the 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 actual event is a is just a, it's a very black eye for that era because it was awful. So anyhow, you just never just, heard of it before. I, I, yeah, I, I really. I mean, maybe <laughs> like. Sometime heard about it and just forgot, but I, I no, I didn't even know that there was anything going on with it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, um, Mexicans, Mexico's Independence Day is September 16th, so a lot of people get this day confused with that day. And you want to know something crazy? Yeah, the, the Cinco de Mayo, um, celebration in Los Angeles is bigger than the celebration in the city where Cinco de Mayo in Mexico started. <laughs> yeah there you go that's because of the drinking well and just because of migration i think there's like 38 million people uh that either migrated or have mexican descent in america 38 million or something like that so, so pretty big number so who did the the mexican independence who did they declare independence from i would imagine spain oh okay I think I I don't know. I'm so we're I'm kind of showing my ignorance, and I mean it's just this stuff I've never thought about. I Let guess. me look real fast. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Either got to be Spain or France, right? Yeah, it's Spain. Yeah, it's definitely Spain. They declared their independence from Spain September sixteenth, eighteen ten. Yeah, from Spain. Yeah. All righty. Let's do sports real quick. Yep. Let's do it's it. It'll be a quick one. Okay.
All right, local sports. Um, so what I know, LHS baseball swept Mac High at home once again. We're playing teams that have we have no business playing in the GOL. It it's not even fun to watch. Um, we I I don't even think I think we might have gave up one run in two games, maybe zero. Wow. Both of them five run, ten run, or five inning, ten run rule, rule games. Um, we don't even get to see our best pitching at home games, like these league home games, because I mean, why you why waste it? You know, um, softball was supposed to play a home game for Legrand. Their field is just underwater, basically, so they ended up having to play home games in Milton Freewater. Um, EOU softball. Left this morning at 6 a.m. for uh, Klamath Falls. The um, CCC tournament starts tomorrow where they're the number three seed. They finally made it into the top 25. Um, the rankings came out yesterday. You know, you landed at 15. They should have been in the top 25 for about the last month. And they finally made it into the top 25. They went over the two-week span in between the two rankings. They went six and two including sweeping the number three team in the nation. The crazy thing is, is the team that we beat, they ended up winning the conference, the team that we beat three times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, OIT. OIT only dropped one spot in the rankings after getting beat by a team that wasn't even ranked three times. So wow. OIT went from three to four, but their coach is also the one that votes from our conference. So each conference gets one coach that votes on the national poll. OIT's coach is our guy. They're the he's been, he's been there for a long time and led them to a lot of uh, conference titles, including this year. So I mean, I guess on one hand you look at it and you're like, oh man, like how do they lose three times and drop out of the not drop out of the top five? But then on the other hand, you look at it as they just won the toughest conference in America. So it's like yeah. it's you know uh, baseball's over. Let's see. Next weekend is the CCC um, championship for track and field where we'll see a uh, national champion in the HEP and conference champion in the deck already this year, TJ Davis. He'll, he'll probably do like three or four events, but he'll do none of those events at nationals because all he does at nationals is the deck. Um, but he'll still try for a conference championship in the 110 hurdles, the 400 hurdles, the high jump. And I think the the long jump, if I if if I'm correct about that, um, he's a heck of an athlete. It's crazy, it's crazy. And then EOU baseball is over; it's done. Um, next Wednesday, the wrestling team is having a, a fundraiser, and I was talking to Clell yesterday, the wrestling coach at Legrand, and at the baseball game, and he said uh, he said that they have over 450 tickets sold already. <laughs> that's a no. lot that's yeah. a lot that's a lot it's like 30 bucks a person or 50 for two that's funny um, kelsey uh i i i'm watching grandkids that night so uh kelsey and kyle are going yeah yeah you get a free car wash with the ticket too oh there you go who's doing the crack arnie arnie cool yeah so there's there's that fundraiser there's a bunch of fundraisers coming up um we have the the Doug Trice Memorial Golf Tournament right around the corner. I just got another uh, application today. Cool. Boom. Um, yeah. All right. I guess it probably came yesterday, but um, yeah, it's exciting. Check out these new hats I got too. Oh, that is nice. It is, huh? It's fitted too. Like it's completely yeah. fitted. There's a kid up at EOU that got licensed to do EOU. So I got a baseball and a softball one. Um, uh, yeah, he's he, he's actually on the baseball team and he's making these hats and they turned out really good. I'm I'm, I'm going to collect every team at EOU. <laughs> it's going to take me a little while because they're like thirty bucks a pop, but yeah, cool. I have EOU softball and baseball so far. All righty, that's it. Well, cool. Well, let's. Uh, it has a chance of getting nice out there today. Let's uh it's let's, warm. 
yeah it's it yesterday afternoon was just gorgeous let's let's see what gabe has for us this is the european model showing our next weather system move from the northwest to the southeast for your thursday raining us towards the blues while the rest of us will just see some scattered showers as we rise those temperatures into the lower 60s for much of us quarter towards meacham into the mid 50s warm spot 73 degrees down in ontario heading into the day on thursday for Legrand, it does look like this we'll start out mild into the mid 50s at nine o'clock and after that point we could start to see a few sprinkles developing as we rise into low 60s for your high temperature around midday and then those likely showers are expected to pop up increasing for your afternoon with a period of steady rain maybe even some downpours by the time we hit the evening hours as we see southwesterly winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour in spots. Heading into my short-term forecast for the Grand Ron Valley, tracking high as 62 for your Thursday, drop into the mid-40s overnight, breaks into showers for your Friday, but it looks to be fairly active as storms look to be likely. <laughs> so nice today, maybe storms tomorrow. Yep. Craig, what's up? How are you? Don't ever see you anymore now that the bank's closed next door. Yeah. But it's so, good to see you on here. Yeah. Um, well, I have a I have a few things from Vegas I want to show. Um it's kind of interesting. So and so then this was this is Fremont Street. And that I mentioned this before, that entire block is uh has this overhead screen just crazy um and then they also have these these zip lines where people can nope. can yeah we talked about that so just kind of a crazy thing you so, didn't even show the good stuff on fremont street BC. <laughs> yeah we can't show the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for yeah for free fremont street is uh it's kind of it's just it's wild it's like yeah, so there's there's uh entertainers. It's kind of funny because the entertainers uh they have a circle. I don't know if you I they have a it's I've like a round there. it's like a round I mean it's probably oh I don't know 8 feet circle and and that's kind of where they, that's their spot. Yeah. And I think you told me they they draw they don't have to pay for it but they have to qualify for it in some manner or not. And there's any there's rappers and singers and there's a guy that'll artists. let you kick him in the beans for 20 yeah, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just kind of everything. There's everything there. Um, uh, you know, so anyhow, uh, so this is the whole, this is really interesting. The entire technology, a big influence were these round screens, you know, it's where the entire the entire background, whether this is a presentation hall, but or a place where they were doing presentations, but even in studios, and that's kind of what I want to show you. So, like this, this is really cool. So this was a little demonstration area. And so then then there's a robotic camera. So see the little screen down here in the bottom, you can see that's what's coming out. Okay. And they you could this was a free thing. People could just jump on the motorcycle and it's like a 15 second ride. Well, when they start, you'll see this robotic camera move and this is the output. And the interesting thing is see the, the perspective behind the guy on this screen changes and just amazing technology here when he gets going. Uh, so you see this robotic camera moving and it's all coordinated together. See how the background image changes in coordination with the camera movement. You weren't so the only one recording it. No. Actually, uh, that guy's FaceTiming somebody. The guy in front of you wasn't even yeah, recording. Yeah, He's yeah, 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 you're up. right. He is. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was, I don't know, I mean, you, the amount of money in this one little display is just scary how much that probably is oh i'm sure that's you know, so anyhow half and this a guy, million probably or two hundred fifty thousand. i don't know could be a million dollars pretty Too easy much. that that robotic camera that screen anyhow so let me go on so here's this is kind of interesting so so this is the this is the demonstration they had like a, a lens that you would see at a football field 
this lens is, uh, I think it's 205 to one. Um, and it just shows you the range of it, you know, normally somebody like me, you, this is a $250,000 lens. And that's just kind of interesting how far that is. So, but then as I was playing with this camera, this is what's really fascinating is these two screens. This is the real hall on the left. And on the right is this balloon that's been electronically inserted and you could zoom in on it. And then, then watch as I pan the camera, the camera is actually on top of the roof. As you pan the camera, here's another balloon that they have inserted into the, into the frame. Yeah. Just really fascinating. So things are not always what it is they yeah. that they might seem. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of scary. I mean, you could, you know, I mean, technically you could have, you could have a burning building or a building explode in downtown someplace and, and not know. I mean, if you were watching on your phone or if you want, you would not be able to tell whether that was real or not, Yeah, you know? So, so what do we take from this kids? Don't believe everything you see. Don't on Facebook. believe everything you see. Yeah. <laughs> on yeah. The internet. But yeah. Yeah. The things that are trustworthy are your parents and your grandma <laughs> and grandpa. Yeah, the, the people that you have a face-to-face -face conversation with and that you know, yeah. Very true. It's crazy the, the amount of of satire. Is that what it would be called, satire? I don't know. Satire has a, I don't know. I don't know the right word, but people know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And people are so easy to believe things, too. It's like. I could tell I could tell some people on Facebook that the world's flat, and here's why. Right, and they would be like, "Oh yeah, yeah." As long as it was aligned with their right, right. but but I've always been a skeptical person. You know, I wanna. I'm like, what's the Missouri State? Their slogan is "Show me." You know, they're a show me. They call themselves the Show Me State. You know, and. And the, what flies in the face of this is that doesn't even work anymore. Showing you doesn't matter. I mean, you, you know, what you, what you see doesn't, isn't always the truth. It's just a, it's just a crazy thing. And especially even now they have the ability to put someone's face on, you know, to just, what do they call that when they, uh, there's Superimpose. a, no, there's a, there's a phrase. Anyhow, you could create a video you could create a video of someone saying something and it looks like them talking, but it's, it's not. Yeah. Ad living. Is that what that would be called? No, there's a, there, there's a technical term that has come out of the works in the last couple of years. And I, I can't remember what it is, but. Is it like when they cut a bunch of different things together and put it all together and make it seem like some, somebody's saying something they aren't? Yeah, it's like, but it's, but it's not even cutting stuff together. It's taking images that they have, video of them, and creating words. I mean, taking and creating a whole different conversation with their words. I I wish I was important enough that somebody did that to me. <laughs> I get such a kick out of it, like just <laughs> put together something where I'm just talking nonsense I, well i mean i talk nonsense anyway, so, i mean i guess it re really wouldn't matter yeah so that would be funny i'm gonna make one of that one of those a ubc are you of the, like yeah <laughs> no <laughs> you know no. it the the i mean can you it's kind of fun uh i worked for a company years and years ago kind of where i learned my trade and at christmas parties and stuff we would, you'd take, you'd find old footage or outtakes or whatever it might be. And you'd put them all together and you'd show, you know, that was kind of the inside joke that you would show at Christmas time. It was kind of fun. So, That's but yeah, funny. if you could cut all of our stuff together, that I would just know, take too long. I kind of wanted to do that with, I wanted to do that with Johnny before he left, you know, and, and take all of some of his outtakes and, or some of all of his stuff and put it together. Anyhow. Uh, I'll, I'll pass on that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I miss him, but I, I, I don't miss hearing him. <laughs> <laughs> Every day for three hours, Mike. And then, no, not, so not just three hours. At three in the morning too. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, every day for probably six hours. Well, you hear him talking, blah, 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 blah. Well, and he, yeah. yeah. And, and both of you have a lot of volume. I remember at times when you guys would be having yeah. a conversation in the studio. <laughs> and you, every, you know, everybody could hear what you were saying for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that time we were arguing about something and you like popped in. Everything okay? Like, yeah, we're fine. Like, like this is normal. <laughs> we're, we're good. You guys, you guys were like a married couple. I thought it was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you were gonna man. butt heads and talk, yeah. So that's just kind of how it worked. Yep. I mean, but the, but then again, I I'm a huge believer that you have to elevate each other, and that's how we elevated each other is because we neither of us like uh, are the best communicators. So um, we just you know, and he's kind of a prima donna, and I'm not. So it was like this, like. When they're yeah. like, he's like, Oh, you got to do it this way to make me look good. And I'm like, I don't give a crap how you look. Like, just talk. <laughs> That's what you're good at. Shut up. <laughs> well, don't talk, but shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm totally, I think that good decisions come out of people not always agreeing. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, you that's, have to yeah, challenge each other. Yeah, you have to have an environment. It was funny. I was talking to one of our guys the other day, uh, a new guy that goes that is going to be helping us on production and stuff. And I was telling him, it's like, you know, the things that you do, you know, even if it comes to cho choosing a font, don't just take don't take the the first font you find. Take an extra thirty seconds and look for yeah. one because absolutely, yeah, because every every decision you make creatively creatively might have to be defended you know and so you you have to be able to know that you thought it out so yeah if i walked in and was over like checking one of their work and be like what why did you pick this font it's stupid at least they could say hey i looked through a few of them and not just say oh it was the default font because if they said or font because if they said that i'd probably smack them like right right and that's you know that's kind of my mantra that that you guys hear all the time is I just want our stuff to be intentional. I just yeah. wanted to, I just wanted to be thought through. Yeah. If you're going to make a creative decision, be prepared to defend it. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to defend if you actually put a little bit of time into it. Right. Yeah. And I thought. mean, and there, there are times that I, I mean, and I, this happens all the time with Bennett and I, and he'll, you know, I'll ask him about something. And he's like, well, yeah, I kind of thought about that. And this is kind of how I want it. It's like, okay. Rock cool. and roll. Yeah. Well, that's like what, like my, it, I'm sure everybody notices like BC shoots on a green screen and I don't, it's because I've thought about, I don't like green screen and I've built myself a backdrop out of stuff that I've collected mm -hmm. that actually, you know, that like I put thought into it where it goes and where it's placed. And I mean, I have a lot of stuff back here. It's not just what you guys see all the time. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you're looking around and it's just because. I don't really uh, care for green screen. Like I'm not a huge fan of it. So I've just decided that my backdrop's not going to be green screen. Yeah. And I don't either, but it covers up the mess of my office. <laughs> if you saw this office. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. I know you see it all the time. And, it, <laughs> and like, yeah, and somebody. I, it's Hurricane I've got, BC went I've, through there. I've got some visitors that, well, it's just, it's just the lowest priority of everything that's going on in my life, you know? And so you know, sometimes uh, this studio, it looks like there, there's, I mean, uh, you can walk in here and it'll look like a hurricane came through. There'll be equipment all up and down the wall from different shoots and stuff. And then like two days later, it's just back to normal. It's like, yeah. Where'd all this stuff go? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, if if two or three different people are using, like, say, this right here, see this? Yeah. If like two or three different people are using it, you're like, hey, where's that camera? Like, where's that? <laughs> where's the camera? Where's, where's the, the camera? <laughs> yeah. No, it. Yeah. <clears throat> Our lives are. We just kind of go from one event to another, you know. And yeah, everything's on. And, a and there, and there's a lot of times where we'll get. 
you know, we'll get, I mean, we stuff, everything comes back and we try and sort it and put it away and whatever. Okay. But, but then we need it again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, Oh, well, okay. We're going to this. I, I, I operate good like that though. Yeah. That's why I fit in good. Cause I operate good on, on the run. Like I, I don't, I'm not one of those people that wants to have everything mapped out. Yeah. No, I want you to tell me what needs to get done. Maybe help me set it, set up the way to get there. Yeah. And then just let me run with it and, and not sit there and make like this Venn diagram and pie chart about how we're going to, you know, for one little event. No, just, let's just do it. Let's rock and roll. Like the, <clears throat> like streaming the baseball game the other day, we just kind of, slapped that together and we tried something new and it worked and and like we need to lighten up the camera a little bit but the equipment and the time in that nothing yeah basically i mean we spent what maybe a half an hour an hour yeah. total uh, just maybe getting... preparing it yeah but the cool thing is is that it's we know what to do next time yeah yeah tj good morning uh good good to have you back yeah everything is starting to get green that's for sure my uh my ex she sent me a picture of my daughter uh mowing the yard last night on the riding lawnmower and her the grass there is just green but it's supposed to rain there for like the next seven days straight so they were trying to get the yard mowed before it started raining yeah yeah, yeah. my son had a really bad ankle injury last uh about 10 days ago and it the crazy thing is is that I sprained my ankle like that a lot. I mean, I have my left ankles got uh, reconstructed, um, but his, the difference, so it bruised all the way to the toes, all the way up the side. Um, it was a pretty bad high ankle sprain, but the crazy thing is, is his bruise straight up the Achilles tendon too, oh, like weird. about, about that far, which is about probably 10 inches Wow, up the Achilles. So we were thinking he heard a pop. So we were thinking, oh, no, you know, like there's something wrong with his Achilles. But they tested it. They did an MRI. They did um, a couple different x-ray sessions. And there's no Achilles damage. So, I mean, he, he's, he was – he had a doctor's appointment yesterday. They took him – they took him out of the boot, put him into a brace, and, and he's released for sports uh, starting tomorrow. So – and he's walking on it. And, and – that's the crazy thing nowadays. Like when you sprain your ankle, they want you walking on it right away. As long uh -huh. as it doesn't hurt, they want you on it. Um, they don't want you in a boot. They don't want you using crutches. They want you doctors and trainers. They want you on that because the blood, you know, the blood supply, getting blood to it is the important thing for healing. Hmm. As long as it doesn't hurt more to walk on it, they want you using that ankle and getting the, you know, get the swelling and the, um, the blood flowing. It's crazy. Cause when I used to bust my ankle up, they'd say, Oh, let, you know, stay off of it and ice it and elevate it. And just all of that is so different. Like a lot of stuff in sports medicine has changed considerably, like taking care of pitchers arms in baseball. Like these kids, even at the high school level, they have pitch counts. They're not allowed to go past. And I talked to John Tolan when I first got back um, uh -huh. to LeGrand, and he coached me for a couple of years. And um, I played baseball with his son, and he we were talking about baseball and pitch counts. And he's like, if, if he was like, could you imagine when you were uh, in high school and and you know that age if they had pitch counts? And I was like, no. I mean, I would throw 130, 150 pitches every couple of days. You know what right. I mean? Right. Now kids are the max in high school, I think is a hundred and you have to have a certain amount of days rest before you can pitch again. And none of that was in high school or, or even in little league or there's rules all the way down now. And there's not, uh, there wasn't back then. I mean, you just pitched whenever your arm felt good enough to pitch. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, I don't, pitching is something, I mean, that's again, until I started watching baseball, and trying to understand it, I I had I had no idea that major league pitchers only pitch once every four games or whatever yeah. it is, you know. And and I 
you know, I just it totally makes sense. But I just I had I was totally ignorant. It's, I had no it's idea. It's not a natural body motion to throw right. like this. Yeah, that's why softball pitchers will pitch two games in a day because that's a natural body motion. Oh, interesting. An underhand throw is a natural body motion. Yeah. So softball pitchers they don't have uh, pitch counts on a lot of them. I mean, a, a, a girl, a, you know, a college girl will pitch two games back to back on the same day. Huh. A a guy with the overhand. Eh. Yeah. No way. Interesting. And the strain that you put on your elbow and your shoulder by throwing overhand is far greater. Huh. Um, so when's, when a pitcher steps forward, are you creating a little bit of a sling action? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the well, whole point. It's, the, it's just like hitting. I mean, it's your, your core is what generates all your force, right? Yeah. Which is, would be your, you know, your upper legs and your stomach and it's your hip rotation and the whip. So mm -hmm. you, you can have, I mean, guys can have a good arm right. you know, without using their lower body, but the, where you generate all your power and force is that put that drive in the whip. Right. And I guess that's a little why catchers that can really throw are, they make a lot of money because they're throwing from their knees a lot of times, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Depending. Sometimes, yeah, it just yeah. depends. It depends on the athlete and how um, it's more prevalent. It, so it didn't used to be as prevalent in softball as it is today. Like there's a lot of girls, including EOU's catcher, on um, my daughter that throw will throw from their knees just to save time. Uh -huh. But in the in Major League Baseball, you don't see it quite as often, just because um, it, it's almost just as fast to already yeah. be in the receipt. So so. Before the pitch even gets there, the catcher's already turning oh. and in the position to throw. Right? He knows. He knows yeah. that. Or well, clearly, yeah. he can see that yep. still happened. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. But I mean, the first one to, to like really, really do it in the big leagues was uh, Benito Santiago. He's the '88 Rookie of the Year, and he he threw from his knees almost all the time. I mean, not all the time, but almost all the time. Yeah. He kind of made it a popular thing, and. Nowadays, it's not quite as popular, but one of the crazy things is like when I was a kid, even all the way up to the big league level, you, you never saw a catcher on a knee, right? You, you're, you're always squatted. Squad catcher. scrouched, yeah. Nowadays, almost every catcher goes down on one knee. Huh, interesting. They, the mechanics have changed, and and they they've taught kids how to block out of that position. LeGrand's catcher, uh, Cole Jorgensen, um, he's a, he's, he's a big boy. I mean, he's like, he's an offensive and defensive lineman. He's not like fat or anything. He's just a big, strong kid. Uh -huh. And he catches off of one knee almost all the time, even with runners on sometimes runner uh -huh. on third off of one knee, but he's, he's agile enough that he can make the, the, the movement to block the baseball when off of that knee. So uh -huh. it's, it's crazy. It's, it's changed a lot. So I tell you, I tell you a quick story from college. I was a an RA, and there was a freshman uh, catcher who came. This is when I was at Northwest Nazarene College, and and there was this catcher that came from California. His name was Wid Medford, and Wid, Wid, everybody knew Wid was the catcher for the the baseball team. Everybody knew that Wid could throw. I mean, that was one of the reasons he was there, and so. Um, and so one time I was I was a long way from the dorm and the soft serve ice cream cone came out of nowhere and hit me right in the middle of the chest. And it was like I was a long it was like there's only one person that could make that throw. And so I ran <laughs> I ran in the dorm, ran up to his room and he was clear underneath his bunk in the very corner laughing, you know, like That's you know, funny. Yeah, it was, but it was like, I mean, it was like, it was like the ice cream cone came out of the sky. It was like, it was like, how in the world, where did that come from? Anyhow, interesting. Yes, bud, 100%. Um, that's why I stopped catching. Uh, I grew really fast and uh, I caught all the way up until I was like 14. And then I just, it wasn't for me anymore just because of my height and the, the stress. I had growing pains really bad in my knees, so it. I just had to. I mean, I I always pitched, but catching was my second position, and then I switched to uh, moved to first base. 
But in, I mean, I could play anywhere. I just wasn't really fast, so um, first base was a good fit. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're ready to get the heck out of here. Yeah, let's do. It. Let's do it. On this day, Cinco de Mayo, May fifth, eighteen sixty-five, the very first U.S. train robbery happened in North Bend, Ohio. On this day in eighteen ninety-one, Carnegie Hall opened in New York. Um, Tchaikovsky was the guest conductor the day it opened. Hmm. On this day in 1922, Perfume Chanel Number no. 5 was released. 1921, that means it's been uh, Chanel Number no. 5 has been out for 101 years. That's crazy. On this day in 1962, West Side Story soundtrack album goes number one and stayed number one for 54 weeks, which at the time was more than 20 weeks longer than any other album in history. Wow. On this day in 2018, the first death from a vaping product happened. An, an electronic cigarette exploded, killing a man in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hmm. Um, let's see. Let's get to the number one song on this day in 1962. PT-109 by Jimmy Dean. I have no idea what that song is. but I, I don't either. I have no clue. Um, and then the quote for the day, there it is. If you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. And that's Dalai Lama. Hell, man. Good. Truth what do we there. got? Next? What do we got tomorrow night? Tomorrow night we have uh, the yes. debate. The debate, 6 o'clock. It's happening at EOU and Bagley Hall if you want to attend in person. But that will be streamed here uh, live on our network. Uh, and that is between uh, incumbent Union County Commissioner Paul Anders and the person he's running against, Lisa Hill. Yeah. So that should be kind of that. And that's and organized that's... or that's organized by the students. Of, there's a group of students that have a debate and forum group. So that's, that's at six, six o'clock. And then news roundup tomorrow night, uh, sports tonight, tomorrow. Um, yeah, just the normal lineup besides for that. Yep. Yep. All righty. Hey, See you Tuesday. Thanks, thanks for watching, everyone.